you. Welcome, Dr. Hessing. Thank you, Steve. We're here at the headquarters of Independent Doctors of Idaho, right next to Treasure Valley Hospital, right next to your orthopedic suite. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you've done. Been a huge advocate for independent physicians here in Idaho for the last really 30 plus years. Tell me about some of the highlights, some of the milestones, things that you've been able to accomplish that you're really proud about. Sure. Well, I, I think I'll just start with I did, Independent Doctors of Idaho, because it really become the nucleus about which most of this has really come around. You know, I did was was a idea that was conceived in the cafeteria at Treasure Valley Hospital back in 2013 as as myself and some independent practitioners, family practice, we kind of sat around eating lunch and we saw the hospitals buying up practices and we saw that our own practices were potentially going to change and we, we said, you know, we need to do something. So we made the decision to come together and form a organization that would mainly political, educational, informational, that would tell the public that we were still here. Doctors had actually owned their own practices. Yeah. We got our declaration of independence and uh, started this organization that uh, basically was just to educate the public. That's what yeah. we started at. Yeah. And since then, so how many physicians have you grown to and kind of what's your geographical spread? Yeah, well, we now are up almost 600 wow. medical providers. About half of those are MDs, DOs, and the other half are mid-levels, okay. PAs, nurse practitioners. And we've grown now where we go from Weezer to Mountain Home, about five counties, and we are have, you know, basically now policies that we manage with the Blue Cross manages for us, and we have about fifteen thousand patients in those those independent doctor of Idaho plans. So this has allowed you to create a group that you can now. Uh, negotiate with insurance providers. Yes, in 2015, as we were getting up about 100 and 150 providers, we we had a consultant come out and he said, "You know, you guys, you're you've got the nucleus here that could really grow and become, you know, really helpful for independence and yeah. maintaining independent physicians in this valley." And so we, at that point, made the decision to form an independent practice association or an IPA. Okay. And we do, and we form that with our money out of our own pockets, and uh, and we're now able to run that IPA, and it's a messenger model type IPA that lets us contract as competitors in the market marketplace appropriately, okay. so that we don't get into trouble with you know the feds, antitrust so, issues yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So. Uh, which uh, apparently you had like a long time ago. <laughs> I've heard the story from you. Tell me a little bit about that because it's only fair that, I mean, <laughs> you laugh, but I know it's probably a little bit painful at the time. <laughs> well, yeah, when I was president of the Orthopedic Society, Idaho Orthopedic Society, back in 2008 or so, and Troy Watkins and I, another hand surgeon, uh, we basically organized the orthopedists. We were uh, wanting to um, educate them about basically changes in the marketplace, so workers' comp insurance, a lot of things. And so we did organize. We, we organized a, uh, an aid, uh, let us not contract together, but, it, but inform each other as far as changes in the marketplace. And, and we, we did uh, get turned into the, to the uh, DOJ and <laughs> run afoul. So, so on that side, <laughs> Yeah, they came back and we, we settled with them and said, well, we didn't really do anything, but we promised not to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was a stipulation. No, I, think, no foul. I think this is my last year that I have to stipulate. I've not <laughs> done any of that activity again. But, oh, good. <laughs> but it's interesting because then uh, now we've, We've now sat, the DOJ's been on our side as we've, as we've been. You were a party to the lawsuit with St. Al's and yes, St. Luke's, right? And that really came about um, as, you know, we, we have this entity and with the doctors and we naturally had 
I was also in one of the original founding fathers of Treasure Valley Hospital back in 1996. Wow. And so now, 25 years later, right. um, you know, we have grown that facility, expanded it three times. We now have uh, you know, nine operating rooms and 26 inpatient uh, overnight beds. Uh, it allows us to really, and uh, we got 20, about uh, 100 and some odd doctors that operate there. About 40 of us are, are owners in the hospital. Mm -hmm. With a national, uh, with a national organization as well, but but it's allowed us to, you know, coalesce around Treasure Valley Hospital, and that, and the hospital sided with St. Al's on the lawsuit against St. Luke's, and so we we did have, uh, you know, that under my hat as well, and that time I was the friend of the DOJ, <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little different. Is that the uh, keep your enemies <laughs> that's close? That's right, little, that's right. I think that's what it was all about. So, but it's certainly been uh, given me a lot of experience to, with independence in this state. And, and for me, that's been an opportunity to really support, as we've had the hospital, the independent doctors, the contract, con contracting entity, We've been able to put ourselves out there as a true alternative mm -hmm. for the other hospital systems. So talk about that. Talk about what kind of costs you're able to save patients and, and physicians who are, who are operating there. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I can tell you that the cost savings uh, in our entity really evolve around physician-owned facilities. And we have 12, 13 physician-owned facilities from laboratory reference labs to um, basically Treasure Valley Hospital, amatory surgery centers, uh, imaging centers, and we are about 50% under market of the big hospitals wow. for almost anything that patients would take a prescription in and have done. Yeah. Uh, and you know, there's certainly, we've, I think, really earned our place in the valley uh, we are so not only less expensive, but we're also high quality. In 1914, I think it was, we we got a call from NPR Radio in in California. 2014. 2014. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, 2014. 2014. We got a call from NPR <laughs> Radio and said, "Who are you guys?" Oh wow. Treasure Valley Hospital. Well, what do you mean? He says, "Well, you guys." are the number one rated hospital in the country wow. by Medicare. It's called HCAPS. Okay. It's, right. it's post-hospitalization surveys that they send to patients. Wow. And sure enough, we were the number one rated hospital in the country for patient safety and satisfaction. Yeah. And, you know, blew us away. And But that's been fit right into our overall uh, arching concerns. And as independent doctors of Idaho, we, we've grown, we've had board now that has 10, 12, depends on how we, how you catch us, but, and I was the original president of that mm -hmm. organization. I moved to past president, Dr. John Eck is now the, mm -hmm. the, the president of that organization, and we got very active, uh, incredible physicians throughout, independent physicians in Boise that are on the board with us, Dr. Nancy Powell, who's also a well-known entity in this sure. town and Nancy's been in the hospital and Salter and she's now our administrative executive assistant and uh, she's been great so we've been able to put our organization out there and have that high cost or that high value low cost and it's really been a great advance for our patients our website is active uh, Independent docs id .com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so you're hitting not only so. the triple aim, <laughs> high value, low cost, right? And um, and and the third one, which I can't remember for suddenly. <laughs> uh, but you're also hitting the quadruple aim, right? Yeah. Which is uh, a clinician experience, right. which is so important. Talk to me about what it means to you to be an independent doctor and how that frees you up in terms of all maybe some of the rigmarole that other people go through. Sure. Um, we don't claim, don't want to suggest that the hospital employ doctors, they don't give good care. That, that's, yeah. that's not Absolutely. what we're about, but we're, we do suggest that we give high quality, low cost care. And for me, 
the real reason that's motivated me, you got to have passion in, in medicine. It's what drives us to do really yeah, kind of crazy things at times, uh, but it drives us. And it's that passion about the doctor-patient relationship mm -hmm. that really drove my commitment to the independent practice model. Yeah. And I just did not want anybody in the boardroom telling me what I had to do in my exam room. Yeah. And I, I just felt like we could be there to educate and inform our patients, give them their options, and help them make you know, the most cost-effective, high-quality choices available. Because that, I mean, healthcare today is, most doctors, uh, uh, you know, about 60% of physicians, it was a survey done a few years ago, even had any idea about what their, their care cost patients. Right. And so to be able to educate them, I think it, they get better bang for their buck. And I do believe that passion is what's driven me to do this. And so for that reason, it's been effective and it's been, it, certainly been a message that's grown, uh, caught on, and we've got, you know, increasing uh, patients signing up in our insurance plans with Blue Cross, and it's just very satisfying to me, and, and we've been able to reward the doctors, just like the big hospitals, with, with shared savings, and a lot of these independents, their onesies and twosies and threesies, yeah. they never believed they'd be able to position themselves with all the statutes and the federal right. paperwork that you had to do to position yourselves for shared savings. But we've distributed over $2 million of shared savings to our to our docs in the last two years. Yeah. And so, nice. so for me, that's a win-win. You're giving great care. Yeah. You're, making, you're helping your patients so they get very low-cost care. And then you're also rewarding your physicians for watching out when it comes to expense and being a good steward yeah. for the healthcare dollar. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just been an incredibly uh, wonderful message to get to get out there and the success of it, I don't take credit for it, but just a perfect storm at the right time in the right place. Good. <laughs> and so it has been uh, just very rewarding to That's see great. that. And I can hear that passion come through about that, <laughs> the doctor-patient relationship, how sacred of a trust that is. Yeah, it really is. And for me, that's what medicine's been all about. You know, my, my uh, I grew up in Boise, Idaho. My, okay. my dad owned Hessing Chrysler Plymouth in town, mm -hmm. and he ran that entity. And as a high school student and coming home from college, I worked for dad, I sold cars for dad. I, these, these fingernails used to have grease under them. And when I decided to, to become an orthopedist, I was looking at being a pediatrician. And my, I had a pediatrician tell me, uh, I've seen, if you're any good with your hands, you ought to be a surgical subspecialist. So, because <laughs> there's a so lot of that, mechanics that, that's in orthopedics, right? right? <laughs> and I was doing my dad's total knees many years yeah. ago, and he was still alive. And you know, he wasn't anybody else to do it, so I did it for him. But he uh, did one of them, and I had the anesthesiologist call over the top of the drapes, and, hey, your dad wants to talk to you, Hesse. And I said, okay, well, let him lighten up. We did him under spinal then, and so we let him lighten up a little bit, and, and he, I heard, hey, yeah, Dad, what do you want? Well, well, Jeff, I, I think I finally figured it out. I said, figured what out? Well, why do you like this job so much? And I said, okay, Dad, why is that? He said, well, I hear you down there. You're hammering and sawing and banging and drilling, <laughs> and just like you're out in the shop. Right. So, you know, I said, well, Dad, you're, you're probably right. And, you know, to this day, the best part of my job is helping people feel better. And there's nothing as rewarding as that, as that for me. That's great. It's just a passion. You know, just last week with COVID, I, was, I hadn't operated for almost for over seven weeks. Yeah. And that's the longest I've gone in 35 years <laughs> not operating. And man, I got back in that room. I felt like a kid in the candy store. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I, just, I was made for. I, I did. I just really enjoyed the surgery. And... I guess you've got to love it to, love it, to really do what we do as long as we do it. But, you know, it was great. And that's really been the overarching reward for me 
uh, you know, for 35 years, yeah. is to be able to participate in those activities and see the skills that we have used in a patient-friendly fashion. Yeah. So. Well, as you think about the impact of the coronavirus on physician practices, and especially independent physician practices, where do you think things will go with independent doctors? How has this impacted them? positively or negatively, being able to flex? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, well, no doubt I think independent practice um, is challenging. We don't have deep pockets behind us. And, you know, so that's, I think, the reason that we need to organize. Mm -hmm. And I believe the organization and Blue, Blue Cross, you know, bless their hearts, they've been very, very helpful to us. They've, they've, been willing to advance payments and we they advanced our shared savings to us sooner than we were would have had to receive it contractually and and we turned around and turned that stuff out when very critical for doctors and the independents have called me with tears in their eyes thanking me that we were able to help them through a lot of this time yeah. and I think as long as doctors organize themselves and they you know, stare down their challenges. Uh, we just brought to my practice uh, one of the, the first new independent doctors right out of training as an orthopedist to Boise in a long, long time, 20 years. Mm. You know, they went to the hospitals, but as far as a new independent orthopedist in town, it's been very rare. And, and you know, we're, we're making it. Yeah. And so I, I do believe and I do think you're seeing a shift back to independence. We've got several physicians that are, that are looking at options, uh, looking at joining, you know, independent practices. Yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged about it. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I think that the doctors enjoy that reason they read really went into healthcare. I think that independence is what it's really all about. And, for me, uh, I, I do think if you organize and you look things appropriately, that, that COVID, all the challenges there, we're, we're getting through it. And you know, you, you're funny who becomes your, your bed partner sometimes. You know? <laughs> I, I we started out by telling you about in 2008 when, when uh, we faced this little issue with the uh, you know, physician reimbursement in Idaho and the and the orthopedists. And we, we actually went up to the governor's office one day back in 2008, and they wanted us to see if we wouldn't, couldn't come together and kind of form a, a bill. And we didn't get anywhere, but over on the other side of the table was the big hospitals and insurance companies. And over here, there was Treasure Valley Hospital and some independent groups and others from around the state. And we never came to a very good conclusion in that meeting. But as we walked out of that meeting, I'll tell you that, and Todd wouldn't mind me telling you this, but Todd York is, works at Blue Cross. We walked, I walked out of that meeting with Todd and I said, Todd, you watch. Someday, you and I are gonna be on the same side <laughs> of the table. <laughs> and sure enough, I walked out of a meeting with Todd at, of a Blue Cross about six months ago and he says, hey, I said, you remember that time when you, <laughs> yeah, Todd, I remember that time. And that's, it's those kind of things that the market flexes and changes. And, and as long as you're nimble enough that you can do that, uh, I think that's, a, that's really the value of independence is because yeah. you can look things, stare things down and understand and make appropriate moves. And, and I think that uh, the doctors are, are, there's more and more, they're kind of coming back to the ranks of independence. Yeah. And, and it's certainly become, I think, more of a desirable position than it it, it has been. Yeah. So yeah. for lots of reasons, uh, lots of support that we're getting uh, insurance wise and you know the ability to our entity to contract and take care of people and it comes in from around this from around the country. There's many doctors that are here helping the you know the buying the low cost high quality, you know, care. That's value-based care is, yeah. I believe, what's driving the change in healthcare today. Yeah. And that's certainly on the, front, on the side of the independent doctor. Sure, sure. 
So that's well, my, my two bits. Thanks for all you've done to organize them and to provide good care for the residents of the Treasure Valley in Idaho. Appreciate your time. You're welcome, Steve. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the opportunity. You bet.